So hi, welcome to Good Noise Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm Glory. And we're here with... I'm Drew. I'm Amber. And I'm Michael, and we are Moxie the Band. All right, so some questions to say about the upcoming album, Dream Feeling. So congrats on that, by the way. How do you feel about the response to the announcement so far? Uh, it's been it's been amazing. Uh, we, we did an Indiegogo to um, kind of fund the record and uh, just kind of recoup some costs, and it has overfunded by about three thousand i think now oh wow um, jesus so we are very very grateful for um all the people that are supporting right now oh yeah yeah that's awesome oh, yeah. it's an amazing feeling we also have our our release um our album release party coming up in a few days here and uh it just sold out so quickly like <gasps> we definitely didn't expect that and yeah the response has just been overwhelmingly beautiful honestly um, I think this has been one of my favorite release experiences so far. That's awesome. Oh, the album awesome. rocks. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, so is there any meaning behind the album title or cover art? Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I guess I'll, I can start with the cover art, I guess. Um, we worked with a photographer named Raul Gonzo and uh, the general, the general like, thing we're going for aesthetically i guess is just uh 80s vision of the future <laughs> um and uh a big part of making this record uh was kind of amber's struggle with um a new condition uh, of epilepsy and uh, a lot of like the the recording process was like this weird experiment where you know we were trying to um get get her her vocal performances but also make sure that she's safe and not um seizing um mm -hmm. so like kind of finding um we we're we we're doing all kinds of outlandish stuff mm -hmm. like by the end of it like getting like oxygen tanks and like uh you know big rests in between and just like yeah it just felt like this weird bizarre science experiment like all the way down to compositionally and, and how we recorded it even um so like i feel like the album cover kind of gives you that uh sciencey vibe <laughs> and like experiment and uh at the same time i was also you know like unfortunately spending a lot of time in the hospital um throughout most of this writing process um and so i don't know it was just kind of like uh i think a nod to this this feeling that i had at the time and while writing the process that I felt like I had everything kind of experimenting or poking at me, you know, had a bunch of doctors doing EEGs and CAT scan, just everything. Um, and all the while I was kind of writing songs about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so it, yeah. I just felt like this very weird pressure cooker mm -hmm. um, to put ourselves in. And, and these two were just kind of trying to help me navigate it all. Um, which I think also kind of lends to the, the, to answer your question about the title that in general while we're going through this kind of crazy thing together just like trying to hang on to the dream through it mm -hmm. um because i think there were genuinely some points where we thought they thought like i you know okay, i might not be able to do this this might be past my my physical um capabilities often epilepsy either occurs in childhood or after you know some kind of trauma blunt trauma or it can onset in your mid to late 20s Mm -hmm. um i did not expect this this um condition of epilepsy to enter my life mm -hmm. and so adjusting my dreams to that what is that you know um mm -hmm. so i think we like at one point we had one of the songs was kind of um just as a placeholder was named dream feeling and that eventually got renamed and we still we just loved that we kept hanging on to that dream feeling title yeah. and then we realized like we're hanging on to the dream feeling that's what this is about hell yeah mm -hmm. well i'm glad you're able to kind of like adjust and still follow your dreams and had a great support system around you like during mm -hmm. all of that you know hell yeah um so can you guys tell us a little bit about your writing process for this album um yeah i'll, I'll start with it um a lot of the songs kind of started um in the time after uh, my previous band had disbanded. Um, and uh, I had played in that band for like 
for 10 years of my life and it was pretty much my sole focus for all of that time so when it when it ended um i was like feeling pretty lost and uh kind of frantically uh writing a million songs in a million different directions um trying not to like lock myself into anything that i couldn't see myself doing for a long time mm. uh because kind of the problem with my previous band was that i um i kind of set the the course of the next 10 years of my life when i was 18 years old yeah. uh, and obviously like a lot of stuff um changes and <laughs> your taste and um, just like everything changes uh, from when you're a kid like that. And uh, it was kind of hard to sustain. Um, so I was, uh, I was very apprehensive to pick any specific thing, which I think you can still hear in the record. Um, <laughs> but um, I was pretty apprehensive and just kind of like writing in a million different directions. And uh, I hit Drew up and, um, kind of at a point of like ultimate frustration um, with just like not being able to figure it out and uh, kind of just asked him if he would uh, help uh, guide <laughs> and uh, join a band with me. And uh, I took him like 40 something songs and that were just like, you know, one minute snippets and uh, asked him to make sense of it. And, and he did. Um, and he helped me flesh them out. And uh, from there, we uh, didn't know what we were going to do about vocals, um, but we were producing um, Amber's solo music and everything uh, was was working pretty well there. And it seemed like a pretty natural fit. So we uh, invited her on. Nice. Oh, yeah. That's really cool. That's like really, really cool. Uh, so what song off this album took longest to write and which one is each of your own personal favorite? <laughs> took the longest to write? Yeah, that would mm -hmm. depend. That's a good question. There's like two musical processes here, or like maybe three, really. There's like Michael's music process, Drew's musical process, and then mine. Like, yeah, which uh -huh. took the longest? Oof. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, if we're talking from like, just like my personal demo staging, all the way till the end, um, it might be Forever Endeavor. Mm, uh, because that song actually started off like I thought it was going to be on the fifth album of my previous band. Um, and it was just like a couple riffs at that time. Um, and then when that band broke up, um, I kind of like reimagined it to be more and what more like what it ended up. Mm -hmm. Um, but just from like the uh, from the recording process to when like Drew and I were like actually writing what this would become, um, I think the single that we just released was probably the longest process and almost didn't happen because um, it was like still being written up until like the week that we were like finishing writing. Like we were kind of planning oh, wow. on. <laughs> And Drew, Drew kind of um, pulled it out for us <laughs> and finished it. Let's go, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that was being written right, right up until the end. And we had like we had recorded like a bunch of things to the song already, and we're like had had a bunch of pieces that need to go into place. And uh, yeah, I came up with the solo uh, after the chorus and uh, and another verse. And uh, Michael, I think the halftime thing was your idea, so. Nice. The thing yeah. about Drew is that, like, uh, he really, I mean, there's many things about Drew and his musical, uh, you know, like, I, I could go on forever. But the thing about Drew is that he really has an ear for a hook and an earworm. Mm -hmm. And, like, I don't know, when something sticks out to Drew and he, like... If, if it's if drew says like that's a hill we should die on i trust it yeah. <laughs> and so we had so much option overload Maybe. among so many of the songs and <laughs> and i took so many passes at writing di like different concepts or different things to each of the songs i swear i wrote like 100 songs to each that you know eventually became the song the lyrics to these songs but uh there, there were a lot of things that almost got completely scrapped or lyrics that almost got scrapped, scrapped or runs or whatever it was. And Drew was 
kind of would be able to point out and say, you know, I, I think we really have something there. Like that, that's worth, that's worth keeping or that's worth exploring. It's worth finishing. And he definitely did that for the feeling of letting go. And I'm so glad because that's one of my favorites on the, on the record. I can't imagine not having, uh, having made that now. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Shout out Drew. Drew. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, favorites on the record. Mm-hmm. Um, I think overall, probably the the cost is my favorite. I think that's just the, the ultimately the the most well written track on on the album. Um, but I think like my just personal favorite is um, you feel it too, just from a, a emotional standpoint. I guess of like that was like kind of the first track on the record that um, that I wrote that like felt like I was doing something right (laughs) like i um you know as i mentioned before i was just like kind of frantically putting together a lot of different stuff and a lot of different genres and that was kind of the first one that was what this album feels like um yeah so that was kind of my favorite Uh my answer keeps changing uh changes with my mood each of these songs has a very (laughs) different mood to it um Mm -hmm. uh right now i'm i'm really i'm really into asking god for cigarettes um yeah i just like have some angst i like to get out and i feel like it really comes out in that song yeah yeah i probably have to answer uh the cost to that that one came from an, an idea that was kind of in my head that I, i'd had for years and wanted to get out and uh it ended up coming out in this writing process and uh michael really helped me um figure out the rest of the idea and um yeah, that one like take is like in a special emotional place in the album. I feel and like fills kind of a kind of a void that that would have been there otherwise. So mm-hmm. it's it's kind of a vibe track, which is something that like I want to write more of in the future. Nice, so, for sure. Good picks. Welcome. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, how the track list for the album come about? Did you guys write the opening be the opener, closer be a closer? Did you shuffle around and see what fits? What was that process like? Good question. Um this is it it was tough um and this is always kind of like a a a point of contention i guess every time i finish an album Mm -hmm. uh where there's like a couple different ways you can go about it um i think we knew pretty early on that pawns was the intro um just like that piano intro i feel like really you know brings you into the world that we're trying to establish um but yeah, there's a couple different ways you can go about it. And my personal favorite way to do that is to have the album kind of flow through um, kind of intentional moods, like rather than jump jump around uh, too much. Like for, because you can either like make it really dynamic and be like, you know, big up song and then down song, big up song, down song. Mm-hmm. Um, or you can kind of like flow through um, and kind of tell a story with it. And so this album kind of has like uh, like chapters to it um, where there's more or less like moods that you're passing through um, and ultimately ending up kind of back where you begin. Um, yeah. And for me, like um, I didn't we definitely while writing it, um, especially lyrically, I was not thinking of the order of the songs at all. I knew which what, what songs were standing out as like standout songs to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it was kind of interesting when we, I think we like took a um a whiteboard and we like wrote all the songs out and we just kept kind of moving them around and looking at imagining with that. I think some we made some of them might not have even been titled at that point. And we were oh, also wow. trying to figure out the titles, and um, it's interesting now because the flow of the album makes so much sense to me because knowing my personal experiences behind each song, the album. Com- the flow of the track list completely tells a story um, mm-hmm. like, you know, that listeners may never know, but like my closest people to me or like, like I know what, what story that's telling. Um, it's funny because I think the ending song sounds like such a like album closer, but I didn't ever like yeah. necessarily know that. And yeah. it's funny because that song starts with the lyric of like, it's time to start again. And it's mm-hmm. the end, it's the ending song. And, 
I know hopefully that will make people just replay the record. <laughs> but no, I didn't mean to do that on purpose. It was a strategical decision. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, no, honestly, I, I had no concept of, mm-hmm. of what the flow was gonna be. And I think it worked out in, in a really good way in it and uh, it sounds like it was intentional on some level, but for me I was really focused on every song kind of having its own personality Mm -hmm. and uh it kind of worked together that they organically flowed into these kind of different camps Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. sort of represent uh different influences that that we kind of bring to what we're doing Mm -hmm. makes sense so you mentioned like there's kind of a story whether or not people are going to pick up on it uh but Mm -hmm. there's still a story kind of throughout the record is it like the way that you guys wound up putting the track list, does it flow chronologically or is it just like throughout the record, there's this kind of like theme mm-hmm. going on? I think you could listen on shuffle and you'll still feel everything that the album has to tell you. I think if you're paying it, I think if you are paying attention to the album, you know, if you're that kind of listener that's going to listen from front to end, then you'll feel that emotional arc. Okay. For sure. I, I think, I hope. Yeah. Like music, at least in the the musical realm of it um or the compositional realm um the uh it, it kind of starts uh more or less in a like cinematic um and kind of like dark atmosphere um and then that that kind of carries into track two and then by and track three and like by track four it starts to move more into the um kind of dancey like a little bit more carefree um chapter of the record and then it moves by um i, I can't that remember dance, the track list off offhand that but. dance party vibe starts moving into kind of overdoing it like asking like kind of almost feeling like you're in a bender the song yeah. the dance songs start getting a little more like getting towards a bender and the bender the bender kind of crashes with some heavy angst and in, into the following songs with yeah that... forever endeavor and then start and then starts to get far more reflective with um with overgrown and hans or we don't call it hans anymore <laughs> sorry, fake title or like our placement uh, titles um ruining the party ruining the party yeah starting and and taking stock of like yeah starting to just reflect and take stock and then lands you at the final track where you're left with nothing but having to start again. Yeah, and the the last track is more or less kind of that that realm again of of where Pons is, where it's kind of cinematic and and dark and and that same kind of mood. Mm-hmm. And then definitely the angsty songs carry more organic element or more like organic guitar and um, more of like a rock element. That's that a lot of uh, listeners who've been keeping up with um drew and michael's work in the past will hopefully be you know like uh pleasantly surprised to hear like or or not surprised i guess yeah. <laughs> yeah. so how do you guys recommend your listeners to listen to this album for the first time should they play it in the car with friends dark with headphones on should they blast at a party work out to it what do you guys personally recommend work out to the feeling of letting go yeah <laughs> specifically mm. that's um, such a good question um, though thank you I always want people to listen in headphones, but I, at the end of the day, I always want people to just be listening at a party. Yeah. Ooh, from a very yeah. nerdy standpoint, um, I, I would hope that somebody has um, a great stereo system with subs mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and that they are listening in a quiet, non-reflective environment. <laughs> <laughs> so in a studio. Right. Yeah, it can be cool and reflective environment. <laughs> oh, listen to the cost while driving at night. Yes. Yeah. I think also like uh, ruining the party while you're running. Yeah. I mean, I think any song's dramatic while you're running. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, end of, yeah. the end of that one. The sure. cost. I wrote the cost while I was on a scooter. Like when I finally nailed in my finishing lyrics, I was literally like riding on a scooter on a rainy day. So I feel like, listen, oh I want goodness. people to listen on a scooter. Listen yeah, on a scooter. I, <laughs> I, I would hope, or I would hope that everybody can just make this happen just for this record where um they all just break up with their significant others and they're, <laughs> they're walking home and it's raining 
um and they just put this record on and like there's just like you know slow tears coming down their face silent yeah. tears yeah. Uh, and there's just headlights coming mm -hmm. and but they're just dazed you know just yeah. walking down the road not even know where, where they're going just kind of lost um <laughs> yeah. so yeah if everybody could just do that for us um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> but then i want them to find help Exactly. Yeah. Spoiler, please don't do that. Don't just break yeah. it up and you know, experience a record. The, <laughs> as fun, I, I love those memes though, where it's like new Taylor Swift's album is out. I got to break up with my significant other to, to really take it in, you know? Exactly. To actually appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this question should be super, super quick. Off the top of your heads, I want you guys to describe this album in three words no more, no less. All three have to do it. Three words each. Bold cathartic intentional Ooh, that's good. That's good. cinematic dance number damn that's good <laughs> really good oh man there's the english major here oh, oh this, this <laughs> question might be too much for me <laughs> now you got even more pressure <laughs> okay uh hard <laughs> um, okay all right Dynamic. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I can do it. You're almost there. You're, just, You're almost there. You're so close. What's oh the gosh. word for when um, there's no words? Ineffable. Don't think too hard. Yeah, you could go as simple <laughs> as like how you guys describe your band, which is like 80s esque. That's, right, good. that's good too. Perfect. Oh, yeah. We'll take it. <laughs> Uh, so, in the same vein as the last question, but not as much pressure, is there a certain feeling or emotion you want this album to invoke in your listeners? Catharsis. Hmm. And uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. And strength. Ooh. Is it good? Yeah, I don't know if it's, like, a specific <laughs> feeling. Um, I just hope that, like, it... It, uh... It really feels like you're stepping into a, a world as you listen to it. Like I, I hope that it is immersive, because um, mm -hmm. we put a lot of we put a lot of stock and uh, effort into the detail of of like creating an atmosphere around each song. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. So is no, go ahead. I was gonna say I hope we we uh, take people through as broad of an emotional spectrum in the space of the album as possible, and uh, I've said I said it many times now but like i just i hope that people will feel inspired in the way that i do when i listen to the music that i love i want to mm -hmm. convey that feeling to people i like that i love that a lot uh so what's your favorite memory that you guys made while creating this album <laughs> um i think one of my my favorite uh little adventures we did on this record um was we we went to a, like kind of stupid lengths um to achieve <laughs> sounds that we thought were unique or uh special um because with a lot of this stuff especially when you're in the electronic world um there's kind of a plug-in to do most of the stuff we did but we uh sort of refused to uh only rely on that and uh for one of the the tracks um it was kind of heavily it was, it's the ending track it's kind of heavily synth um and in an electronic world. And we wanted to put something uh, cool and organic um, and human in it uh, to give it a little zhuzh. And uh, <laughs> we, um, we decided we needed to go to a parking garage to achieve natural reverb. Oh my God. <laughs> um, it was peak COVID. Um, so we figured we could get away with it. Uh, and we, uh, we started at the nearby mall uh, at midnight. Uh, where we were prompt promptly thrown out. <laughs> I guess they, <laughs> <laughs> I guess they did care. <laughs> like we set up the whole, all the mics. We had like this, um, we had a generator that was quiet enough to record. And uh, anyway, yeah, we got kicked out and we like just went frantically driving around looking for another uh, garage we could use. And we, we happened to find a government parking garage <laughs> that was more abandoned. <laughs> there you uh, go. And uh, we were able to pull it off somehow. And it was extremely loud, um, but it sounds pretty cool. Um, I hope someone pokes around at our stems, stems someday and 
uh, nerds out on that. That's, that's fucking so awesome. fucking cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's, and that's, that's the only record that you'll hear the Roseville City Parking Garage in. <laughs> so, I mean, where else are you going to hear that? True. Oh, the, yeah. sound the source was a marching snare. I don't know if I mentioned that. But, yeah. yeah. And you can hear it most heavily on the, the closing track of the album, which is why it sounds so just like, it, that's why it sounds like you should be running through a parking garage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or a parking garage. Trying to get as much of that chariots of fire, yeah. fire vibe as possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. we have a lot of ridiculous memories making this album though because it took us about four years to write yeah <laughs> so we're basically family at this point yeah <laughs> the memory with them honestly was um cheersing the cheersing the, the the completion of the album together here in the studio because michael also uh built you can't see much of it now but he built the studio that we're in right now um drew has like oh my god he built the studio that we're filming things in right now, as you can see. Um, but yeah, so Drew has a state of the art studio, and um, you know, like uh, uh, Michael took the task of building it, which was insane. He did this all the, the all the while table. as we wrote the as we wrote the album. So. And on that day, we got Drew a trophy to commemorate. Oh, <laughs> for surviving another record with Michael Franzen now. <laughs> Um, you can imagine how colorful it gets in here. Yeah, so it was just cool because I, I think we rewrote a lot of the album while the studio was like half finished up times, and um, we were just standing with our album finally finished, the studio finally finished. We had Drew's wife and kids in here too, and just like you know, family meeting, cheers, and celebrate. It was sweet. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, that's good. That is a good moment. Oh yeah. Drew, do you have so, a memory that you'd like to share? Oh man, there are a lot of them. There, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know how, how how deep I'll go, but um, we just a lot of key parts of the way that the records sound are just due to like little nerdy kind of science experiments we would do, like um, recording like audio and loops that you hear throughout the track onto cassette tapes and like distressing those, like unwinding the cassette, like subjecting the tape to a little bit of distress and like rolling it back up and putting it back in a tape recorder and recording it and uh, we went to a vintage synth museum oh yeah to record uh, a lot of the synthesizer uh, tracks so we used a lot of we got to use a lot of really cool classic synths on that that's which so is cool. we're kind of gearheads so that's like fun for us and other people who are kind of in in that world even the wind chimes that or any chat like the chimes you hear throughout the record are actual wind chimes played by the wind we didn't credit the wind on our <laughs> That's fun. what if the wind comes for you guys and they want their royalty they might they deserve <laughs> at least three percent i feel we are earth wind and fire yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So for this question, I want you guys to picture you're on tour. You're at a gas station for a rest stop. You're going in. What is your snack of choice? Pickle. Oh, oh, there you go. In a little baggie? No, just the gas station pickles, like AM, PM. They've been sitting out for several days. They're kind of rancid, but just <laughs> perfect. Oh, my God. That's flavor, especially if they're sitting in the juice. <laughs> wow. it, like, it soaks it all They've up. They've been marinating. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe leave Marin them out in the sun for a little bit. <clears throat> exactly. Like, they're like up. almost... Yeah, yeah. Um, for me, I, I I've had years and years um, to refine this, um, <laughs> and the the answer ends up being pretty boring because it's more a process of elimination of um, what hurts your butt the least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <It's> real. Yeah. <laughs> Do you end up going to gas stations for your meals um, too often? Um, so I usually just end up with like a a good trail mix. <laughs> That's good. Fair enough. Fair enough. Ooh, I'm gonna put you through the same weight right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would probably most recently have been Slim Jims, but I've started to rethink that, <laughs> and uh, I think I would just go for an icy now. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. What flavor? Beer, whatever Word. Yeah. Red and blue, mix them together. Ooh. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's the way right. to go. Um, go to AMPM. <laughs> so on the topic of food, if the band was a dish, what dish would the band be and why? Oh, oh wow. Lasagna. It would be lasagna, chicken tiki, masala, spaghettios. 
no. all in one. Well, oh, that no. is a lot. <laughs> Thanks, Amber. That sounds great. So, I know what me. you're trying to convey, but that's the oh man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a lot of flavor happening Probably. all at once yeah. <laughs> I love pizza. Yeah. pizza I've never thought of yeah, it yeah it's like you have before. diverse toppings you got but it all works together and we're it's, a, it's a crowd pleaser baby we're, we're a dish best served hot for sure there you go okay and... so yeah I'm sticking with lasagna we're yeah. layered okay yeah, there we go. so we have three different answers here <laughs> You're about to see how we resolve conflict. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> is the... the lasagna. <laughs> and it's a great word. Yeah, it so. is. It's pretty fun. It's a, gr- it's a great dish. Mm-hmm. It is, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> uh, so for these last couple questions, we're going to shift away from music, if that's okay with you guys. Great. So we're actually going to go straight to death row. Boom. So if you're on death row, what would your last meal be with a drink? Pickles with a glass of pickle juice. You like pickles, huh? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it actually would be pickles. It actually would be pickles. Okay. That's fair. You have a favorite like brand of pickles? I know that's like a debate that goes on. Yeah, Smart and Final First Street. Mm-hmm. Okay. But they don't make them like they used to. But they oh. still make them. And I'm holding. I continue to hold on. Okay. Uh, because there's there. We don't need to get too into this, but pickles are just. Pickles are getting too healthy, and I don't like it. And that's gonna no. be my message Give of this band. Exactly. I want Give me all my salt. Yes. Mm-hmm. 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 All my I salt. All my vinegar. If I'm gonna have a cucumber, I'll have a cucumber. I want a pickle for a reason. Exactly. Absolutely. See, you get it. Yeah. You get it. I approve that <laughs> message. Thank you. <laughs> These are strong feelings to have about pickles. I mean, they're pickles. It is. It's a very yeah. big topic right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. I- I put some thought into this, um, and I think uh, I think the only way to go for your death row meal is, you know, death is death is scary, um, and uh, having to having to face that would, you know, just be a lot emotionally. Uh, so I would have to pick. Um, there's this uh there's this place in philly that makes a pizza <laughs> that is uh this uh this big mm-hmm. um oh whoa, okay pizza that big and then what you do is you uh get a philly cheesesteak down the street and mm-hmm. and you put it inside the pizza uh and then you eat the whole thing and once you have eaten the whole thing um you will want to die <laughs> <laughs> or you'll die trying <laughs> So, so did I, you just like make this up on the spot or have you had this before? Oh, I've, it's uh, it's called a Philly taco, I, I believe. I think that's what it's called. Anyway, yeah, I did do that and I wanted to die. And I think it's the only thing that would help me face death um, <laughs> willingly. Okay. And, and how are you washing that down? Because it sounds like you need a lot of liquid with that. Yeah. Ooh. Well, it, I well, think it has to be it. something awful as well. <laughs> just a, mm. really just like some scoville like ten thousand hot sauce oh yeah that'll make you want to end it right there yeah yeah definitely it might kill or, you or... Or Chata. I, knowing him it would be your if he's being honest mm. you too? oh yeah for me gosh i'd have to just i'm gonna have such a basic answer like i would just go with like a good old burger mm-hmm. um, like a good juicy burger and fries and whatnot just a, a good old American meal or or, uh, or sushi yeah. those mm-hmm. are things that I love like good good rolls with like a, like ahi tuna and uh, you know yellowtail and all that stuff salmon mm-hmm. and I drink with that let's see what time is the execution like, uh, you know, if I'm not going to have to deal with the hangover for too often. It's yeah. five o'clock somewhere. I, I, mm-hmm. I don't even really drink. No. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd probably I'd probably go with the sushi and, and wash that down with some sake. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Um, so if you could live in one fiction world for a week, where would you live? Fiction world. Ooh. I, I'm I'm already living in it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm really obsessed with Rick and Morty right now. It, it's Ooh, too yeah. much. That's a good one. But yeah, I want a portal gun. 
Let's... Me too. Oh, man. <laughs> Gotta go over all the fiction worlds in my head. I know. I was gonna say Lord of the Rings, and I was like, that'd be really scary. <laughs> yeah, I'm not bad. <laughs> Rivendell would be sick. It would be super sick. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Drew, you got one? I do have one, and it's kind of a guilty one. <laughs> <laughs> Better. But, like, I'm not even, like, necessarily a big fan like a lot of people are, per se, mm -hmm. but, uh, like, Harry Potter, like, Hogwarts yeah. is such a cool, like, charming place <laughs> where magic is real and, Aww. like... <laughs> Like all these cool little things happen. Like, yeah, what? I think that'd be good. When, oh, when I was eleven, um, I uh, was caught crying, um, you know, just like beside myself with sorrow. Um, and my mom had asked me uh, why I was crying so hard um, on my birthday. I had just turned eleven, um, and I had to explain to her that um, I didn't get the letter. <laughs> <laughs> It's awful. Oh my god. <laughs> so sad. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> oh my god. Maybe yeah, it was just late. Go, I'm gonna go with my kid my kid version and I was obsessed with Pokemon. Um so Ooh, yeah. That's a good one. You know, if Pokemon were real, that'd be pretty fun. Nice. Yeah. Good pick. Uh, so I have the honor of asking the last question. Every single person we've spoken to has actually said it is the most important question. What is your favorite color? Can you say black? It's not a color. We do take it as an answer. All right, black. <laughs> Black's my favorite. Okay. Infinite void. All day, baby. Can I choose just like a family of colors? <laughs> like, uh, like, what are we saying? Are we talking like, like autumn just colors? Just blue and oh. uh, all the blues you might think of. Okay. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. I agree. That's my answer too. Mm -hmm. Alright, sounds good. Awesome. Um, so as Glaze said, that's all the questions we have to say. Is there anything that you guys would like to plug? Uh, dream feeling out 11-11. <laughs> Listen to it. Um, watch our ridiculous videos online. We worked really hard to make them. Um, also, thank you to both of you guys for such great questions. Of course. Yeah, thank, of course. You. thank you for joining um, us. Well, thank you for Snow. This guy's been Moxie the Band, and we have been the Good Noise Podcast.